Hello everyone, in today's video we will learn how to use one very important and useful technique for simulating multiphysics phenomena in COMSOL. We will learn how to vary the parameters in our simulations, that is, how to compute the system response not only for a single value of the parameter but for a value or values of parameters that belong to certain interval. For example, what you can see over here is the example I'm going to explain today. This is a basically one meter plate, the plate with one meter radius, that's 0 0.2 meters thick, right? And here, on top of this surface, I have an external heat flux. For example, this heat flux can come from a laser heating or can come from some joule heating, some heater that you have placed on the top surface. Now, I will be looking into the basically displacement and stress field. Here is the displacement field in steady state and here is the temperature distribution in steady state. But I'm not going to compute only the steady state system response. I'm going to compute also the transient system response. Now, one of the fundamental problems when you simulate your system is to verify how accurate are your results with respect to reality. For example, let us assume that we have designed such a system, a physical system, that we have placed the heater here and that we have observed in time, let's say deformation or temperature at this point, let's say a temperature. So if this is the temperature, most likely you will have some initial delay here, right? And then after some time, you will have a response, a first order system response that will look like this. So this will be the temperature of the point over here in time. And this will be the measurements, right? Let's say this is the reality, right? These are real measurements obtained, for example, by placing a thermocouple in this point. Now, you want to reproduce these results in COMSOL multiphysics and you want to verify or to investigate on this simple problem how accurately this software can reproduce real temperature behavior. So, first you would model such a system in COMSOL multiphysics. So, if you have a plate and if this plate is being placed in the air environment, most likely, most likely, what you will have as boundary condition and as initial condition. So the first boundary condition, of course, we're going to have radiation from all these side surfaces. Now, to quantify radiation or to model the radiation, you will need to have epsilon. This will be emissivity of your surfaces. You need to know epsilon. So this is the first unknown in our system. Okay, the second parameter, or not unknown, it's better to say the parameter, right but you you only in practice in practice you often do not know exactly the values of the parameters so you only know some nominal values right now the second parameter will be the heat loss right due to the convection right the convection and forced convection between this surface and the surrounding air. So the temperature, or sorry, the heat will be transferred from this surface as you heat it to the surrounding air through convection mechanism, right? The third boundary condition will be this heat flux acting here. So you would need to model this heat flux, right? If you know, for example, your uh, heater, what is the power of heater being produced, you can model this, right? You can model this parameter. However, you never know the exact value of this uh, or basically or the value of the power produced by the heater. So you can only guess the value, right? And then uh, another boundary condition is to assume that these surfaces here are fixed. For example, you can place a ceramic ring around this surface and in that way you can basically uh, thermally isolate this and you can basically constrain the deformation, right? Although 
the boundaries will also deform. However, you always have to make some approximations when you model the system. So there are, for example, three at least three parameters here that are kind of uncertain. That's basically emissivity, right? Another parameter is your heat transfer coefficient. Then you can assume the heater power or from another modeling perspective, you can assume heat, you can basically say that this is a heat flux applied to the surface. Then you might have several other parameters such as, for example, initial temperature, surrounding air temperature, uh, some boundary condition, extra boundary condition, if basically on one side you have a, uh, some part that's being cooled, etc. Now, what would you like to, what basically you would like to do is to figure out what are the real values of these parameters? What is the real values? What is the real value of emissivity, H, and heater power? Let's just talk about heat transfer coefficient. So what would you do? You would simulate such a system and model, and then you would vary the value of the heat transfer coefficient, H. You would vary vary these values. So you would simulate the system for, let's say, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1, 2, 4, 8, and cetera, until let's say 100. Because we know that in enforced convection, H will have relatively small value. Uh, of course, the unit for H is Watt divided by meter square times Kelvin, right? This would be the value of your um, heat transfer coefficient, convective, not conductive, convective heat transfer coefficient. And you would simulate your system for these values of H. Now, the parametric sweep in Comsol Multiphysics is an efficient way to simulate your system behavior for different values of the parameter. So if you set up a parametric sweep, sweep uh, Comsol Multiphysics study, you will not obtain a single graph, but you would obtain different, different graphs and different responses for different values of your parameters. So for example, this will be a response for H0.1. Then, Comsol Multiphysics or parametric sweep will not give you one, curve, it will give you another curve. This will be, for example, for h equal to 50. And then, for another value, you will obtain, for another value of h, you will obtain another curve. This will be, let's say, h equal to 10. And by performing this parametric sweep, you can figure out you can figure out what is the most accurate value of your heat transfer coefficient. For example, this can be equal to 5. So, the value of the parameter that produces the smallest error between your simulated curve and from your measure, measured curve will give you the true value of the parameter. Right, so that's one application of parametric sweep. Another application of parametric sweep is, is that in Comsol Multiphysics, without even having experimental data, let's say you have verified that Comsol Multiphysics is not lying, that guys from Comsol Multiphysics company did a great job, right? That their simulation environment can reproduce reality by, for example, performing the following test. Then the next step is, let's say you want to design here, you want to design this uh, plate, right, such that it heats up or it produces certain temperature distribution. For example, you can vary the height of the plate, right, you can vary the radius, right, 
or you can simulate the system response for certain values of the height for the certain values of the radius then you can also optimize this shape you don't want to have a circular circular geometry you want to have some different shape that's basically parameterized by certain parameters and parametric sweep will op will help you in this scenario since you will be able to investigate how certain design parameters influence the system response this is a very useful technique and uh, i use this in practice and i'm really really amazed how well it works i was basically fitting console simulation parameters to data and the first step i try to do is to figure out the values of the parameters that produce the most accurate measurement results and i perform the parametric sweep so in this video, I will show you how to set up a parametric sweep studying Comso Multiphysics. So let's start. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. We click on Model Wizard, we click on 3D. And uh, the first step is to couple the heat transfer in solids interface. We click on heat transfer in solids. With the solid mechanics interface that can be obtained by clicking on structural mechanics and clicking on solid mechanics and click on add okay and we click on study and as a study we are going to select time dependent study so we are going to select time dependent study since we're looking into transient behavior of the system we double click on time dependent And this is our final basically step okay so this is our main window the first thing that we should notice that we have here a multi-physics window and the first step that we need to do we need to couple basically the heat transfer in solids and solid mechanics there are several ways how to do that how to couple so the first step you can basically or the simple possible solution is basically to click on right click on multiphysics and you can click on thermal expansion okay by doing this we have basically coupled heat transfer in solid and solid mechanics and later on we are going to come here and we are going to define our domains okay so the next step is to define our geometry if you click on geometry and we do right click we can basically create a cylinder so here is our cylinder window and uh, we're going to keep the default radius of 1 and we're going to change the height to be 0 0.2 meters or 20 centimeters and we click select so this is our cylinder the next step is to choose the material so if we click on material we do right click we can select either blank material or add materials from the library so let us add material from library if you click here we expand this window we will select building materials and i'm going to choose for example an arbitrary aluminum alloy i do double click double left click and here it is okay what is important to observe here are the parameters that we need to simulate our model these parameters are heat capacity, thermal conductivity, density, Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity, and Poisson's ratio. Okay, now the next step is to define the boundary conditions. So, how to define a boundary condition? So, the first boundary condition that we are going to define, we are going to assume that the outer edges of this cylinder are fixed. So, how to do that? Well, we click on solid mechanics and then we can do the right click and we can click on fixed constraints so in the, with the fixed constraints we can basically choose the boundaries that will be constrained that will not deform I'm selecting them and basically this is our first boundary condition let's define the second boundary condition in our case we are going to assume that 
basically the heat is being lost by radiating the energy from all the outer surfaces of our system. So how to define the radiation boundary condition? So click on heat transfer in solids and you have here basically uh, several options. So you can select here surface to ambient radiations, uh, you can select heat flux and other other options. So we are going to select basically uh, surface to ambient radiation. Okay. And then we are going to select the boundaries here, this window, by clicking actually here on this button, we can choose the boundaries that we that are going to basically radiate the energy. So these are the outer surfaces. Now, uh, surface emissivity is an important parameter that we need to define. We can select here user defined emissivity and I'm going to call this deliberately, deliberately. I'm going to choose here and select and write something like this. I'm going to write emissivity, right? Now, you can clearly say see over here that COMSOL does not recognize unknown variable emissivity, right? So, I assign here a parameter to the surface emissivity. You can assign any value from 0 to 1, however, I assign the parameter. Since I assigned the parameter, I need to basically define that parameter. So, if I click on parameter, I'm going to put here a parameter called emissivity. What do you do just under the global definition? You find parameters and you click here. And here you can put expression. I'm going to put it to be 0 0.7. Now, if you go back to our surface uh, to ambient radiation, here clearly COMSOL is able to recognize the emissivity as the parameter of your system. Now, this, this specific parameter and another parameter will be varied in our simulations will be varied in our simulation in parametric sweep. So if you want to do a parametric sweep, you first need to define the parameter over here. And later on, I'm going to show you how to say to console in your basically in your study window, how to do the parametric sweep for the time being, let's just leave it like this. Okay. The next step you need to do, you need to select in multiphysics, uh, coupling, thermal expansion coupling, you need to specify the domain here. So you need to select the domain. Currently we don't have any domain and we are seeing an error here. Selection is empty. So if we click here, we can select this domain and we can do build on. Now console know that we are going to couple heat transfer in solid and solid mechanics on this domain. Let us now define the third boundary condition and this boundary condition will be free or enforced convection between the surfaces of this plate and the surrounding air. So how to get this uh, boundary condition? There are several ways. We can click on heat transfer in solids and we can look, we can choose the option. We can select for example heat flux, flow condition, inflow outflow, heat sources, boundary heat source, thin structures, pairs, etc. Now, we're going to click on heat flux. We're going to click on heat flux. And here under the option of key heat flux, you can select convective heat flux, right? And of course, we need to select our boundary. So this, win this button should be selected and we are going to select all of our outer edges. Okay, good. Now, here we need to define the heat transfer coefficient. So again, since we're going to vary this parameter in our parametric sweep, I'm going to define another parameter or to assign to heat transfer coefficient another parameter, I'm going to call it H convective, okay? H convective, okay? If I copy and paste this H convective, I can go to my parameters list and then I can paste this. So this will be our parameter. And here we need to assign some default value. Before we dis assign the default value, we are going to go back to our basically heat flux and we are going to look at the units. Units are very important. So the units are watts 
divided by meter square meter squared times Kelvin. So if I go here on my parameters list, I again will copy and paste this for some reason this is not memorized because probably I didn't assign the values and basically if I'm not wrong the quantity should be Kelvin times meter square and the units should units usually in console are denoted like this and we're going to assign uh, some default value basically the value will be 5 uh, basically what I know from my modeling experience uh, when you have a free convection from uh, metal surfaces to surrounding air these parameter values are from let's say 0 0.5 until 15 or something like that for, for something like that for metal surfaces and surrounding air okay let's just clarify let's just see again that these units are correct so the units will be watt divided by meter square Kelvin let's go back and see what happens so the unit is VAT divided by meter square Kelvin. That's perfect. So we are good. Now, so far so good. Everything is perfect. However, we need to define an external variable or heat power that will heat our surface, surface of the mirror. So this will be our fourth boundary condition. I'm going to assume that on the top mirror surface I'm having a small area and in this area I have an external heat flux with certain power that will heat our system. So how to define this heat flux? If I click on heat transfer in solid again the right click I can assign a heat flux right and then here I can select the heat rate however you can see over here the first problem so if I click on this surface right I want my heat flux to act on a small region of this surface however if I click on this surface you'll see that the complete surface is being selected so I don't want that I need to define I need to define a smaller circle over here and I'm um, basically by defining this small circle I'm going to define the region and in this region my heat flux will be acting so how to do that well we need to go back to our geometry the easiest way you can create another cylinder, right? And let's specify the radius of this cylinder. Let this cylinder be, let's say, let the radius be 5 centimeters. Or not 5 cent. yeah, let's leave it 5 centimeters. And let the height be basically, height be 0 0.3. But let's displace a little bit this um, cylinder. Let's displace or... We can just leave it as it is, okay? If you click on build select, so this is our cylinder, right? Now, I want to define a region that will be intersection between this cylinder and the top cylinder, right? And this region should be on the top surface of our plate. So how to do that? Here is the trick. If I click on geometry, there is a very nice option here, basically called partition, right? And if I click on here, Objects to Partition, if I click here, and if I click, click on Tool Objects, right? And if I click Objects on per, to Partition, right? If I select this option, if I click Build and Select here, I'm basically going to partition, I'm going to partition our plate into one region and the second region and this is the region we need and you can see you get it you get it also on the other side although we don't need this region on the other side great now we have a region defined on the top surface and this region will be used to define the heat flux if you go back on the heat flux voila here it is right we can nicely select our region and let's specify the heat rate so I'm going to choose a um, very high heat rate of, let's say, 100 watts. It should not be too high for this specific structure, but let's just keep it as it is, right? We have 100 watts. Now, the next step is to define the initial values. So here I'm going to use a standard value, the classical value, or the basically the default value of uh, temperature, right? We need to know the initial temperature in order to simulate such a system. So the initial temperature will be 
basically the room temperature that's basically 293.15 kelvins or that's basically 20 degrees celsius right now you have a solid mechanics option you can also define some initial value if you want to have initial strain stress right but i'm not going to do that in this in this video before we jump on defining the study we need to make sure that basically other parameter other system parameters are properly defined now what is important here to note is that we need to have uh, basically a parameter called coefficient of thermal expansion right for aluminum that's basically 23 times 10 to the minus 6 1 per kelvin right so we need to make sure that our model basically uh, properly assigns this coefficient to our domain right here we should verify that this is basically coefficient of thermal expansion and that its value is selected here from material it might happen if you don't have a material from library if you define the material by yourself right and in that case you will have to specify here in thermal expansion you'll have to specify user defined however we are not going to use that option another important thing to check here in multiphysics is that we have common model input right that would be a reference temperature so if you click here we can get we can go to the uh, source default model inputs and here it's very important to see this parameter this should be basically the initial temperature another option you can also define initial temperature as a parameter that you're going to basically sweep but I'm not going to do this in this video then the next step is to see our mesh. We click on build all. I'm just going to use default mesh parameters since I don't want to refine the mesh. I don't want to use a more denser mesh. However, uh, you can use a more denser mesh and meshing is a, an important topic in finite element analysis. If you don't mesh your object properly, you might obtain uh, difficulties in simulating, yield conditioning, etc. So meshing is an art actually okay so here is our mesh we can click on build all okay nick the next step is to define our study parameters and to define the parametric sweep so if you click on study one time dependent the first step we're going to you do we are basically going to adjust the discretization time so here in the range of discretization time i'm going to start from zero I'm going to use uh, relatively large time steps of 10 seconds and then I'm going to end up my study at 1000 seconds. So in total, how many time steps? I'm going to have uh, around, let's see, 101 time steps. So I'm going to have 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. until 1000. I'm going to select this option include geometric nonlinearity. I don't want to explain this option in uh, basically in this video. It's always good to, to select this since this should basically produce more accurate results, right? And here you should uh, basically uh, look that these options are selected and in default they are selected. Now I'm going to click on study and I'm going to click on basically parametric sweep, okay? So by clicking on parametric sweep, I'm going to assign the parameter to my study that's going to be varied. Okay, so and here we can choose the parameters. So let's say the first parameter will be convection, right? Heat transfer coefficient between the surface and the surrounding air. And here we're going to select the parameter value. So we're going to, for example, do 1, 2, four six eight and ten okay and let's basically select our study so in our study let's assign another parameter that we are going to vary so if i click on study i click again on parametric sweep right and i'm just going to move down 
this parametric sweep by just clicking here and you can select move down right and again I'm going to click here on add and I'm going to value vary actually the emissivity value. so I'm going to choose the emissivity of 0 0.2 0 point let's say 6 and 0 0.9 right so th these are these values will be the values that I'm going to vary in my simulations okay so you can see here you can assign many other parametric sweeps or you can add another parametric sweep node in this case what will happen you're going to simulate this problem how many times let's see how many parameters we have we have one two three four five six so six value for heat transfer coefficient and three values for our basically emissivity so in total we are going to have three times six we are going to have 18 simulations that will be run okay so we are going to change the parameter values and for every parameter value or every pair of parameter values we are going to obtain one simulation one time trajectory of deformation or temperature or whatever you want to have in your simulation okay so let's just define finally one point that we are going to use as a point as a reference point for for example tracking the deformation of the system so if I click on geometry I click on basically um, on uh, more primitives I can select point right and let's choose a point on the top surface okay so the top surface is uh, let's see how our coordinate system is oriented okay you can click here so this is the z-axis if I remember correctly the height of our system 0 0.2 the thickness here it is here's our point and let's just shift this point away from this heat flux so let's do 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 and let's click on build select okay so here once we plot the results we are going to track the deformation and temperature of this particular point let's double check parametric sweep we're going to va vary these parameters we're going to vary emissivity right let's check the times 0 10 1000 perfect the final step is to click on to compute bottom so we click on study and we can just simply click here compute okay so this will take some time probably since we have three times six simulations to run right but you can basically track here the progress of your simulations uh, so what is important to observe here you can see the current value of basically convective parameter of emissivity and what is interesting to see here are basically the values we are having right so these are the time steps very important to track here so basically if you go up you can see time matrix time matrix and you can see how the simulation is running so we are still in a basically first batch right the batch for which h convective is 1 and emissivity 0 0.6 okay you see we are jumped into another value and I'm going to stop over here and then I'm going to show you the final results in interest of time since this is going to take a while so after almost 10 minutes we obtain the results so this is a default window that's being produced right and this corresponds to the temperature distribution in steady state for certain values of the parameters so if you want to see how the system will behave for certain values of the parameters for this from this window you can select the parameters that you're interested in so for example let's see what happens if you choose one here we do plot you don't see here a big difference since uh, unfortunately I've chosen 
the parameter values that will not produce significant differences. So for example, I could also use 50 over here as the final value. However, in interest of time, I didn't want to do that. Okay, you can also see the stress behavior. You can choose the parameters of the system and see how the stress will behave. Now, what is also important to observe is the displacement, the total displacement at certain point or the temperature change at certain point. So let's see how to obtain these results. So if you click on results, you click on 1D plot group and under the 1D plot group, you can click on point graph, right? You click on point graph and here under the selection, you can basically select the point at which you want to plot displacement or temperature. Here I'm going to choose this point. And from this window over here, you can select the parameters of interest. So if you just select all the parameters and all times, right? If you click on plot, we will obtain the following graph. So every line here corresponds to certain value or certain combinations of emissivity and heat convection parameter, right? If you want to see specific behavior of the system for a specific value of the parameter, you click here manual, or you can even better click here from list, and then you can select here 10 as the value of the heat convective parameter and the emissivity, again, you can select from list and you do plot. Let's see what happens. Okay, so this is the temperature behavior for 10, for the value of 10 for H convective and the emissivity of 0 0.2. If you want to have another pair, you will simply select the value of emissivity of 0 0.9. For example, if you want to see what will happen for the pair of parameter 10, 0 0.9, you click on plot and you obtain the red line over here that corresponds to your system behavior. Okay, here if you click on uh, basically plot, you can change the variable that you want to plot. Let's say we don't want to plot the temperature, we want to plot the displacement. So how to get to the displacement? You click on basically on this button over here, replace expression, and here under, under the menu solid mechanics, you can find an option displacement and you can click on solid displacement, which is your total displacement, and you click on plot. So this is how our point will deform in time. This will be the total deformation of the surface point for two values of parameters. Unfortunately, I did not select the values of parameters that would produce significant changes here. I should probably select the heat transfer coefficient of 100, and then you will see a big difference. But anyway, I think that this video demonstrates how to perform the parametric sweep in console multiphysics. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe. Thank you very much and have a nice day.